What is that woman doing? Is she reading a newspaper with accurate facts that have been vetted by dedicated journalists as opposed to scrolling through her phone in an infinite echo chamber so big social media tech can get her to click on more ads? Well, I sure hope so, because reputable news outlets like the New York Times are making a bit of a comeback now as people learn about the dangers of relying on social media to receive their news, where algorithms just try to show you stuff that you agree with and that your quote-unquote friends repost without actually reading the article. People are now realizing that it's worth paying a few dollars a month to consume actual well-vetted and accurate information from sources such as the New York Times. And unlike certain social media monopolies that prohibit the scraping of public data to capture the public conversation, the New York Times has a robust API and they encourage us to use their API to scrape data about the articles they're writing so we can capture metadata like keywords and persons and places that are being written about so we can use them in our own apps and analysis. Such as these Medium articles here which describe how to use the New York Times API to scrape articles from the past and do a little bit of analysis all using Python. And it's great because you can access their historical API and go back over 100 years and retrieve the news from any given day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to scrape historical data about articles in the New York Times using their official API. But unlike those other Medium articles, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of writing custom, messy, disgusting code just to parse data out of the API and put it into a CSV file. I'm going to be using the Steve C data platform to go over that part. Disclaimer, I own the Steve C data platform and it's a paid product, but it will save you a lot of time and frustration if you need to go from New York Times API to CSV files of bulk data from the past. From there, I'm going to do a light analysis on the 2020 election and compare Joe Biden and former President Trump's media coverage the day right before the election using the API. So you can skip ahead to that if you don't want to see the Steve C data part. Link in the description. Getting started is really easy. You just go to developer.nytimes.com and you can access their developer portal. And they even have a whole page dedicated to how to get started. So you just have to create a free account here. Just give them your email address and once confirmed, you can log in and then go to the app section of your account. And you'll probably want to click this new app button here and then you can see that my app is over here. You just create one. You don't have to wait to be approved or anything and you get an API key. Once you have that API key, you're good to use any of these APIs. You have a rate limit of one request every six seconds, up to 4,000 requests a day. And we're going to use the article search API to get started, but you can see they have a lot of other things on books and movies and most popular emailed articles, APIs, etc. But we're just going to start with using the article search API here. And here's the documentation for article search. We can see it's pretty straightforward. We can look up articles via keyword, and there are a couple other filters that will go over here. So what I really like is they give us an example call, I believe in learning by example. So you can literally just copy this and then put your API key here and then change out the query here. By default, it'll look for elections and you can just paste this into a URL bar in your web browser and you'll see all the data back here. So it's in JSON format and you can see that there are hints of useful information here, but you typically need to parse this JSON out using a programming language or tool. And we're going to use the Steve C data platform to skip all that messy work. So like I mentioned, disclaimer, this is a paid platform, but you're free to just watch this to see what kind of data we can get out of the API. And what this platform does is it wraps around the official New York Times API and it lets us put in our own inputs here. So I can put an election like in the sample or changes to whatever and it automatically constructs the request for me. I already have my API key entered and I'm gonna add a few of these extra filters here in the documentation. So I'm gonna give it a from date of June of this month. And then here for page, I can put in 0, 1, 2, 3 if I want to keep going and get more pages of data. And here in the results, I'll see that I got back 10 rows of data. And instead of a big messy JSON blob, I can see it's actually in tabular format here. And I can export this in CSV format and take a look in Excel or put it in Pandas for more analysis. So here I can see a couple other things like what kind of feature it is, when it was published, etc. And if I want to load these articles into a database or into pandas for analysis, I can click this button here, expanded CSV, and in one click I get a CSV file without having to write any code. And the system also parses other collections it found like keywords. So there are multiple keywords for articles, so there's a dedicated collection here. And if I download expanded CSV, I'll get another CSV file 
And this time to the right of the CSV file, I'll have a link to the underlying article. So I can see different types of keywords here, what type it is, if it's a subject, geolocation. And then on the right, I get a reference to the actual article that it was. So the data is automatically denormalized. Again, if I wanna put it into a database or do some keyword analysis. So while these results are great, I'm guessing you came here to get more than 10 articles for analysis. So we can go back to the developer documentation here and check out the section on pagination. And we can see that each page will return 10 results, but we can paginate up to about a thousand results according to their docs. So we just have to put in page one, page two, page three, etc. So we can go back to the Steve C integration here and put in page one and then run this again and we'll get a new set of collections that we can download as CSV files. But then we'd have to manually stitch all of the responses together into one big CSV file or ingest them all individually, which is a pain. So fortunately, the Steve C platform has this workflow formula here that can do all this for us automatically. And I can import this into my account, then I can enter in a single query or multiple queries as well as an API key, and it will automatically go through all the pages and combine everything together. So here I'm gonna take advantage of the from date, and I'm gonna search for Biden and Trump, and I'm gonna only do it on the day before the election of 2020 to see how their news coverage differed. And I'm gonna also set an end date, so I only get that one day of data. And I can see here under the page input, it's set to run out of pagination loop. So it'll run those queries each for Biden and Trump, and for each one, it'll paginate until it gets to the end. And then here under extractors, I'm going to get all of those extraction collections that we saw before, but combined for all of the pagination requests. And now I'm just going to run the workflow and I'll give it a handy name I can remember later on. And here are my results. So I can see I got collections, but they combined all these different pages together. So Trump made it to page four and Biden made it to page seven. So it looks like Biden received more press coverage on the day before the election. So let's take a closer look specifically at the articles CSV file and we can check it out in Excel. So I can see the input here on the left, for instance, Trump, and then I can see the articles on the right. And if I scroll down, I can see all the inputs for Biden and I can see that the combined results together give me several hundred articles about both candidates. And I can also check out the keywords which break down the keywords used in each article so I can sort of get a sense for what everyone's talking about without using natural language processing or any fancy technologies like that. And I can see they give me back different concepts like subjects or places or people that are mentioned in the articles, both for the ones that match Trump and the ones that match Biden. Now let's visualize this data. So I put this spreadsheet here in Google Drive so I can analyze it in Google Colab, which lets me run Jupyter Notebooks on the cloud through my Google Drive. So here I'm just loading in the spreadsheet with the keywords from my workflow result. I'm dropping the API key from the column so you guys can't see that and steal my API key. And here I can see the input. So for example, here's Trump and this says police reform. There's another one. So each of these represents a keyword in an article. And then if I look at the end of the data frame, I'll see Biden's keywords. And again, each of these rows is a pair between a keyword and an article that matches the search results for Joe Biden. And like we saw before, Biden received a lot more articles than did Trump. And now I'm going to do a count. So I'm basically doing a conditional here to say that when that column here matches Trump to make that a one, and then this column here is going to return a one for Biden. This is just a way for me to count the number of times each keyword is used for each candidate here when I use this group by. So what I want to do is check out for each keyword, see if, what the difference was between media coverage. So for example, if a certain keyword Trump received more coverage than Biden, I would like to know that or vice versa. And I'm gonna order these in order of total count. So we'll see the most popular keywords up front, which here is presidential election 2020. And Biden was mentioned in more articles, but the second most mentioned topic was Donald Trump and Trump actually was mentioned more. So it looks like pretty equal coverage overall, but we can see there are a few standouts where Joe Biden was mentioned a little bit more. Usually on some of these more specific topics in states like absentee voting, Biden was mentioned a lot more. Same with other interesting states like California and Texas and a couple other topics that Biden seemed to get more coverage under. But the biggest find here was that in general, there were more articles covering Joe Biden than there were Trump. So take from this what you will. This is not meant to be conclusive whatsoever because remember, it's not about how many articles you were mentioned in. It's also the tone and also how many people read each article. So it's not just a numbers game. I wouldn't read too deeply into this analysis. If you did want to go deeper though, I would suggest getting this data for yourself and you can look at other things and 
Specifically, I would want to look at co-occurrences and see which keywords that Joe Biden was mentioned with versus President Trump, which we did not cover in this video. If you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments as well as any other ideas you may have for analyzing media or public discourse from historical records or anything else you can imagine, and I'll try to make a video on it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like if you learned something, subscribe to see more, and stay amazing and stay data-driven.